Core Connection. I'm Mira Rubin here with you on Enlightened World Network. And today's topic is projection from the inside out. We talked about projection earlier in the week, but it was more about um, projections that we might um, be experiencing from other people or that we might cast on ourselves. And um, today I wanna to talk about how we, our projections out into the world dictate our experience and how we can shift that around based on what we're projecting. So before we get started, let's take a minute or two to get present and settled in. Let's take a deep breath in through your nose and hold it. And imagine clean, crisp oxygen flooding into your lungs, flowing into your bloodstream, nourishing all your cells and organs and bringing vital life energy to your body and being. And as you exhale, exhale any tension, stress, negativity, or fatigue. And now let's take another deep breath in through your nose and hold it. And this time, imagine brilliant, bright light lighting you up from the inside out, nourishing, lightening, enlightening, enlivening, and invigorating all your molecules, all your electrons, all your cells. And as you exhale, exhale any remaining negativity, fatigue, um, and tension, and stress. And now let's just gently press our palms together and really put your attention into your fingertips to feel that amazing sensation as your fingertips rub across your palms and put your attention into your palms to feel that tickling and that tingling and allow yourselves to become present right here, right now. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So good to have you here. Good morning, Bernadette, and good morning, Andrea. So good to have you both and everybody else who's joining us. Um, today we're talking about projection and how uh, really, really our experience of life is a projection of our inner experience, our inner beliefs and predispositions. So um, I was talking with a client and uh, we were talking about how how trauma leaves an imprint and um, when when we grow up in a traumatic environment, we develop behaviors that are um, designed to protect us and that ultimately become not so not so positive. For instance, uh, anger or you know like defensiveness can be a really effective, tool against attack. Good morning. Good morning, Susan. So good to have you here with us. We're talking about projection. And so we're um, with trauma, we, we develop responses, behaviors that, that help to protect us. And it may be, it may be a behavior, for instance, of going numb, it may be a behavior of running. It may be a behavior of attack, counterattack, you know, or defense. Um, and, and then as we, because we're conditioned in so many ways to that environment of trauma, it becomes a lens through which we see the world. So what we're doing is we're projecting the intention, Bernadette says fight or flight syndrome. Exactly, exactly. And what happens is that we, we um, then see through that lens of attack because we've been so conditioned to it. And so our response is to, to go into whatever our pattern is. And, you know, it's interesting. Um, the fight or flight syndrome, I've heard it expanded and uh, expanded to fight, flight, freeze, um, feed, and engage in sexual behavior. Those are all ways 
because I'm not going to say that word here. <laughs> but um, those are all ways that we respond to trauma. Good morning. Good morning, Rosalind. So good to have you here. Um, so the thing is that those, those pattern behaviors, part of that pattern behavior is a perception or a projection of danger, right? So <laughs> Bernadette says, oh, I think I'm missing a few steps. I just recently learned of those other other responses, but it makes sense. I mean, I've seen it. Certainly a lot of people um, eat to give themselves comfort and and, um, and on and on. So um, oftentimes the behaviors that we develop as coping mechanisms or that are that are really effective in in an emergency situation become embedded as more um, patterned behavioral responses. And, and as a result of that, they it, what was originally intended as a um, protective mechanism becomes something that then is an oppressor. And part of that whole behavioral mechanism is the perception of threat. So in other words, the projection. So if I, uh, if you say something to me and I am projecting that that's an attack, then I'm going to respond in a way that is perhaps inappropriate to that circumstance, right? Where I'm going to be overreactive. And I also might project on you the, the dynamic that I had experienced in the past that elicited that behavior in the first place. So if I am not being heard um, and, and in other words, sort of be not being considered and, and kind of having my spirit crush, my response might be like, why can't you hear me? What's wrong with you? Didn't you hear me when I told you that before? Um, rather than, oh, that person just was preoccupied or whatever. It's not about me. Instead, you know, I might perceive something as an, an attack or as a belittlement or as a slight when the intention behind it wasn't as a slight at all, you know, that there was no mal mal uh, malicious intent at all behind whatever occurred. Um, and, and that maybe there, there wasn't the judgment behind it. There wasn't, there wasn't a, a negative intent. And yet when we're so conditioned to, um, to maybe verbal abuse, for example, then we might be hearing things in someone speaking that isn't that aren't there things that aren't there in terms of that uh malicious intent you know or um yeah so what i'm talking about is triggers and part of our triggers are a big part of our triggers are perceptual you know or or like a perceptual filter that we hear things from. So we're so used to being attacked that we hear things through a filter of, of attack, for example, and then project this, this malign intent on the person that was just saying something, you know, to us. And maybe, you know, maybe, maybe somebody was just distracted in a moment and and wasn't paying attention and it's not about their relationship to you it's more about what was going on for them right so i'm wondering if if you've ever noticed um if you've ever noticed that you filter things through certain uh 
interpretations that that lead to upset, lead to conflict. So there have been people in my life where I had experienced a lot of um, a lot of attack, for instance. Good morning, good morning, Dennis. Good to have you here. We're talking about projection and how uh, we we project our interpretation or expectation on other people, and then that, how that influences our interactions and experiences. So when I've been when in the presence of people who um, have said things that were meant to hurt or um, to criticize, et cetera, et cetera. When you grow up in a, a context of criticism, for example, then, then that's the filter through which things are heard, whether it's meant that way or not after a point, right? It's like, okay, I'm, I'm, receiving an attack how am I going to respond to that attack and hearing everything as criticism and taking it very personally and it it propagates this whole cascade of behaviors and reactions so because if I that if I then react in a way that I where I feel that I've been attacked, I'm going to be defensive or I'm going to implement whatever my other kinds of behavioral um, protective devices are. And then that spurs more conflict, right? And um, so Bernadette says, sometimes it becomes a, habit a habitual emotion, which may add to a soul's wound. Exactly. Because because when we find ourselves kind of falling into an automated response, it's not in alignment with, with our intentions necessarily. Like I, so many of us were, were working on being elevated, on transcending our traumas, on, on, on growing past the hurts, becoming whole and being kind and being, you know, all these, all these other um, intentions that we have in our beingness to be present, to be um, responsive rather than reactive, for example. And then what happens is that these triggers become activated and bam, we're, we're automated. You know, we're robots almost just going through this cycle of reaction. And um, it doesn't have much to do with real reality. Yes, our experience is real. You know, yes, that's our particular reality, but it doesn't necessarily have to do with um, with what the the whole picture of what was happening from the other end, for example. Good morning, good morning, Grace Isis. I love that. Good morning, Core Connectors. I love it. Thank you so much. It's great to have you here. We're we're talking about how our experience of the drama and trauma of the world or, or of our lives is so much a projection because what happens is when I, let's say I've been conditioned into a certain reactive pattern where um, I'm assuming that people are not valuing me. So when somebody says something, I'm going to be hearing it through the filter that people aren't valuing me. And I'm going to react to, to say, well, you know, what's, what's wrong with you that you're not valuing me or not recognizing me or, or whatever. Like if that's, if I have that defensive kind of protective mechanism. So it, it, we, we can, and and 
what happens is that I internalize that whole interaction and I'm not using me saying this is what happens for me because it's it, in the past perhaps, but way less so now anyway. Um, there are moments, there are moments, but for the most part, not so much. But but then what happens is that I make up all these stories about what that person's intention was and how they don't respect me or how they don't care for me or how they, um, you know, think badly of me or or how they want to harm me or, you know, whatever it is, I add to the stories of that original drama um, and that original trauma. And what it does is serve to reinforce the same, the very, very same filter and pattern until we can step out of it, until we can say, well, wait a second, maybe it really didn't have anything to do with me, what they were saying or what they were doing. Maybe it wasn't something that was intended to be hurtful to me. And, and in, that, in that possible understanding, maybe I can step away and start uncoiling that that whole tangle of emotions and, and responses so i'm wondering um wh how in in your life if you've seen places where you've had these reactivities and you were able to diffuse it um, uh, diffuse all that wiring you know to unplug it and and what kinds of artful ways did you go about doing that? Good morning, good morning, Josie. So good to have you here. Um, so we're talking about projection and how our suffering is largely based on a projection. So um, what what would that look like? Also, um, let's say from another angle, besides just the trauma, um, we can be projecting, like when we do comparisons, when we compare ourselves to others, when we say, well, or, or we compare ourselves to an ideal that we fabricated, you know, like um, I'm projecting that life should be like the leave it to beaver and probably that's way before most of your times but it was like this family drama that you know perfect family kind of thing um and that that's how life should be uh when we project that we create suffering for ourselves through comparison right to say uh, first of all i'm creating this this unachievable ideal and then I'm disappointed and upset because life doesn't happen that way. Or I'm projecting this ideal of um, by this point in life, I should have this much money. I should have this kind of circumstance. I, life should be a certain way. All of that is a projection. And um, when we should on ourselves and others you know what we're creating is a, is an opportunity for misery so good morning good morning elaine so wonderful to have you here with us and um susan uh <laughs> susan remembers leave it to beaver <laughs> that's awesome um <laughs> i love that show too uh it was a long time ago Anyway, um, so the projection, whether we're projecting, projecting intentions on others or we're projecting uh, these ideals of how things should be or we're projecting ideals about how we should be. I should be this way. I should have done this. I should have done that. I shouldn't have reacted that way. When, when we're projecting these uh, ideals and ideas of how things should be, what, what's actually going on? You know, we're creating a fantasy and then 
comparing reality to it. <laughs> you know, like who said that that that's the way things should be? You know, what what is this whole idea of things should be a certain way? You know, things are as they are. You know, we we may desire for them to be different, but that doesn't mean that they should be that way. And we don't get to punish ourselves and other people because we have this idea of what should be. So um, Kay said, hey, Kay, welcome. I don't think I've seen your name here before. Kay says, manifesting the new earth. That is indeed my projection. And so it is. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, so we can, I, I believe too, and thank you for your, for your um, contrast here is excellent. And we, we create pro positive projections too. You know, like we can meet somebody and we can be projecting, let's say we're enamored of that person. We can be projecting all kinds of wonderful um, attributes on them. We can also be, uh, imagining and manifesting and i don't know if manifesting is any different from projecting maybe maybe it isn't um it, to bring into being we can be uh projecting all kinds of possibility i i think the way that i'm thinking about projection is is distinct from manifesting um and and i'm all about manifesting the new earth so I'm right there with you, Kay. Um, and I think that there's, maybe can we make a distinction between projecting and intending? Um, because I think having clarity of intention is, is different than a projection of that, that's not, particularly conscious in in the context that I'm speaking of anyway uh, the way that I'm using the word is really like um projecting assumptions I think is is the way that I'm talking about it right now um and and I see that as different from intending. And, and I, and not that I'm right, you know, I'm just saying that in, in, in this mess up here, the way that I'm, I'm thinking things through is, is that um, our intention creates reality. Uh, projection is, cre is, you know, maybe it's, maybe it's the same. It's just not the same in the way that I'm using it right now. Elaine says, yes, there's a difference between judgments and self inquiry for growth, becoming aware of both as part of the awakening. A hundred percent. Thank you for that, Elaine. So for sure, um, we have, we have judgments. Um, I guess judgments, interpretations, um, biases, uh, I think projections are things that we often do unconsciously. I guess that's kind of what I'm saying. So judgments and self-inquiry, when we're able to identify our judgments, uh, then we have a greater capacity to be free of them. So that's what I'm talking about here is um, our judgments, our projections, uh, or attributing certain um, intentions to, from uh, uh, attributing certain intentions to other people uh, in response to us, for example, you know, this whole complex dynamic. So Kay says, we are indeed co-creators, co 100%. Indigo children, uh, light barriers, et cetera, rise into projecting the new year earth. All is beautiful and in divine order and so it is. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So, um, I, I just think that the way you're using projecting is different and and in a more elevated way than I'm talking about it today. Um, so, for sure, I agree with you 100%. We are co-creators. And one of the ways that we create our experience 
is through the lenses of our perception. And the lenses of our perception are, in a way, projectors. So perhaps in if from, coming from where you're standing, Kay, you're projecting a beautiful, beautiful world and the perfection of everything and, and in its divine order. And I'm not here to argue that by any stretch of the imagination. I'm just talking about um, incidences when we're experiencing drama and trauma and how uh, we can be attributing motivations to others through that lens of trauma or drama that may not have anything to do with the reality of what the what just went on what the dynamic was for example so bernadette says family tribal emotional stress oh i love that that's such a great way to talk about it family tribal emotional stress is so far from where i am and it comes with fighting and emotional judgments. I get that. Oh my gosh. So, so, um, so true. Like the tribal, family tribal emotional stress. Yes, uh, I think that that's something that is the source of a lot of these dramas and traumas and projections, right? And as we, as we, move through um, as we evolve, as we manage to heal um, the emotional judgments and the fighting hopefully starts shifting. You know, it's, it's so funny. Uh, and I don't know that I'm going to quote it perfectly, but you know, you hear, I, I've heard uh, something to the effect of if you want to, if you, if you want to, if you think you're enlightened, that's what it is. If you think you're enlightened, just go spend some time with your family. You know, for most people, that's true because where are our triggers? Our triggers are with our families, right? And that's the tribal emotional stress or the, the tribal emotional environment for, for so many of us is one where there's all kinds of triggers and you're just walking around like this raw, raw, um, raw meat you know just like very it, it it's very easy in a family environment to to be triggered and to go into these automated types of responses so um elaine says oh Kay says love the word possibilities lots of illuminated light to you thank you thank you thank you Kay much much appreciated and um elaine says ramdas said if you think you were so enlightened go out go hang out with family okay so i didn't know who it was from but thank you for that elaine exactly you know if any of us need to be humble just go hang out with your family and it'll uh it'll um take you down a few notches right we get to see where we're still uh, where we're still triggerable, right? And and um, I think that in the context that I was talking about projection, I think that in family, that's where our projections are most alive, you know, because we think we know someone. So we have certain expectations of how they're going to interact with us. And so we the lens through which we it perceives something is tempered often by hurt or anger or or resentment or judgment or whatever you know whatever challenges we've had within the family context some of us are fortunate enough to have the experience of trust and love in family and that's a beautiful thing and and navigate and, and maybe all of the above and that's the challenge of navigating the family um constellation shall we say so elaine says i purposely go around people who have not mastered the habit of judging and it serves me well as i can hold love in my heart so you get to prove to yourself elaine that you are more evolved and um and and keep keeping yourself aware it's awesome 
And Kay says, personal unconscious projection is indeed different, but once awoken into high vibrations and the power of now, you choose what you project. And I feel we are fulfilling our soul contracts. I agree with you 100%, Kay. That's, that's really what I'm talking about is bringing our, our projections to awareness so that then we can elevate them and, and um, make conscious choice. That's what it comes down to. That's the source of freedom. And, and I, I've realized more and more that um, for me, it was really interesting in, in um, identifying my core values, uh, what I, my top value was consciousness. And what I recognize is consciousness slash awakening and um, what I realize is the reason for that, or the reason that that's the highest value is because in fact, the highest value is freedom for me. And, um, and consciousness becomes a path to freedom. And so uh, freedom is one of my, is, the, is my highest value. And we can talk about values. Maybe, maybe tomorrow we'll talk about values. Anyway, Dennis says, judge not, yes, tongue twister, judge not, lest ye be judged. And that's, that's so, so, so true. Because, well, even, even if we don't judge, it doesn't stop us from being judged. Perhaps it frees us from the, the, bonds of the judgments of others if we're not judgmental but it doesn't stop others from judging us necessarily and in any case this has been a very stimulating conversation at least for me and I hope so for you and I so appreciate this time that we spend together um, and I think I'm going to wrap it up for the morning so I'm Mira Rubin and this is the core connection and I go live each weekday morning here on the Enlightened World Network Facebook page. Please, please check out the other awesome Enlightened World Network programming, EWN, uh, One with the Earth, and uh, Enlightened World Living. So until next time, thank you. Thank you, Bernadette says, enjoyed. Have a blessed day. And the same to all of you. So, so, so much love and appreciation and until next time.